I'm Kathy Neocon, I'm a group leader at the Francis Crick Institute in London, and our lab studies early human development and its application to embryonic stem cells. So we study human development from immediately after fertilization all the way up until just before the embryo um, implants in a womb. So it's all so-called pre-implantation development. And what we're particularly interested in is in understanding how do the first cell types become specialized in their fate and function. So the first cell types are um, they're cells that will be set aside to have um, a specific fate um, in terms of contributing to just the placenta itself. They're placental progenitor cells. And other cell types are specialized in that they give rise only to the yolk sac um, after implantation. And then there's a third cell type, which is quite unique in that it, it has the unique ability to give rise to the entire embryo proper. Uh, and, but at this stage, it's about 10 or 20 out of 200 cells. And what we study is what are the molecular properties of those cells and what are the key kind of um, hierarchy of molecular events that led to the specialization of those cells separately from the placenta and yolk sac kind of faded cells. Um, so it's quite transformative genome editing um, tools, uh, especially really efficient ones like, for example, CRISPR-Cas9, because now it allows us to um, understand the role that a key gene might play in this um, decision, in this important decision of setting aside embryo faded versus so-called extra embryonic faded or yolk sac faded cells. So now we can interrogate, for example, is this gene really critically responsible um, by inactivating that key gene um, so, such that the protein is never made in the embryo and then asking the question, does the early embryo cell actually arise in that context in which you've now depleted that protein or gene from the whole genome of the, of the embryo? And if it doesn't arise, then it means that that gene is a really critical regulator of that cell type. Um, so it tells us about the hierarchy, the importance of key genes, and, um, and gives us really important insights into development. I think it, it, it will take time to understand fully the molecular properties of these early embryo and uh, placental faded cells, and that knowledge could not only um, inform our understanding of stem cells, but also could inform our understanding of early placental cells. And we know that there are a number of placental-related failures in pregnancy, so one of the other outcomes might be understanding early aspects of why those placental cells might fail to develop and what are the key proteins that you need for successful development of those early placental cells.